Darkcast Network. Welcome to the dark side of podcasting. You are listening to Castles of Cryptids, where the castles are haunted and the cryptids are cryptic as fuck. And I'm Alana. And I'm Kelsey. And you are listening to episode 138. And we're happy to be back. And yeah. we missed you guys last week. It was Sorry impromptu. for the delay. Yeah. <laughs> A quick featuring of one of our other dark cast um, podcasts, which is always fun because it sometimes gives me a chance to kind of like check out what they've got on offer and we're always yeah. featuring different ones yeah dark cast on like a rotating kind of thing every month so we put out that one by hands off my podcast who features a lot of like missing and um uh, like minority cases and stuff which is really cool yeah, yeah. especially I, we didn't really like um sometimes i don't pay attention to dates like when it's like oh it's um like january was um stalking crimes like yeah like month or whatever and then i forget sometimes that like february is like black history month and stuff like that so then i Uh, forget that we could feature cases in a theme you know me i I always think of themes when we get to like dates and stuff yeah (laughs) i tend to around holidays like yeah like that can be uh, fun yeah like (laughs) christmas and new year's and halloween yeah yeah i always like to a little bit but yeah then it can get yeah sometimes things get pushed back like with our schedule and now we're i'm like okay so we were gonna put one out that around the 15th that was gonna be about betrayals because i was thinking it comes out on the ides of march but it's still gonna be a good episode whenever it comes out because that's yeah. always a fun topic it's not like super tied to a theme <laughs> no and i think you don't always want to be like super tied to a theme or like even necessarily talking too much about what's like going on at that date because then if you go back and listen to things like a bunch of episodes during like covid and that's all people talk about you're like yeah. i don't need to go back to that time <laughs> that's fair yeah it can be a lot but um yeah what's going on with you how was your day <laughs> not much i had to return something to amazon and in my options on like um, sending it back they had the option that would cost the same as if i went to a post office and tried to mail it back is have somebody oh. come to my house and pick it up and i was like sure that sounds like the laziest option i love it and then okay. i haven't <laughs> uh, done this before yeah no neither have i and the window they gave me to pick it up was like fairly narrow and i was like this will be good it's like early and then i can leave because i had some stuff i wanted to do well, they were like an over an hour late and it just kept saying it was yeah. delayed. And I was like, okay, well, now I don't have enough time to go out because it says you can't just leave it. Like you have to be there in person to hand it to them. You can't leave it. It's like waiting for up. the cable people. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah, that was very annoying because it basically yeah. messed up almost everything I was planning to try and do today. Uh, which was a lot more running around and getting stuff done on my day off. <laughs> so, yeah, a day off pretty... during the week, which is a precious thing that yeah, you've got to realize, yeah. <laughs> Especially because I work what I was working uh, most of the last week, and then or like most of this week, and now I think I have three days in a row again. So it was like this one day in the middle was. <laughs> I wanted to do so much and it didn't work. Day to do things. Yeah. 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 You start working Monday to Friday and then you're like, okay, no, I actually like those days off where you would work Saturday and then get a day off during the week because yeah. you can make your doctor's appointments or whatever. It's not always and easy some places, to get off for that. Yeah. A lot of places aren't as busy on the weekdays as they are on the weekends. So yeah. it's nice to get in. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, with the freaking snow we had earlier this week, like, 
Pat had ordered his, um, oh, yeah. you know, his weed order, the one he gets kind of paid for through because it, he, you know, helps treat his back pain and stuff that he has from all all his lovely issues from being in the army, right? So he gets some yeah. that he gets to order kind of like through Veterans Affairs, but it, you know, means that it's like, okay, we put it in an order on like what Thursday, and then for some reason it has to come from like ontario or whatever yeah. <laughs> so then it's like the weekend and then what when did we get the snow monday so yeah i think it was monday it tuesday it was it was a wait when it's supposed to come like the next day you know <laughs> yeah yeah that sucks it was yeah. crazy we got like a foot of snow and then seriously though it was really <laughs> cold too yeah i asked rain if she was putting away her winter coat and then i said She's like, oh, I haven't been wearing it. And then I was like, well, I should put it away because it's just kind of like hanging on the, <clears throat> it's a big long coat. And I don't know, it. she hangs it on the door sometimes instead of putting it in the closet. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> it just, it fits better. I don't know. Anyway, I was like, oh, wait, I won't put it away. I'll, I'll watch I'll jinx it or something I said. And then I didn't know it was calling for snow. And then I yeah. didn't throw it away, but then still the next day, freaking snow. And yeah colder it's like what the hell it was just like you know plus eight celsius well because i was off that weekend i was off the (laughs) friday saturday sunday and it was so beautiful i didn't even wear a coat for most of the weekend i was just wearing that's when it was like plus eight yeah (laughs) i think i wore a hoodie to go out on the sunday and then the next day it's totally minus 30 celsius and a foot of snow 30 oh god i don't know what yeah with like you're looking at i never saw it get that low and i didn't it was I didn't with the wind chill further. with the <laughs> oh, wind no, chill the wind it was chill. minus 30 yeah i think that's why i don't look because i'm like <laughs> oh. i'll find out when i get out there and it's fucking cold and i have to zip up my jacket for like the first time this winter <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh any hoozle um what else how are you guys um <laughs> they can't yeah. tell us very easily <laughs> no but sometimes it's like oh i see you guys we got some yeah. ratings from some different people <gasps> on like good pods and stuff which i was thank like, oh, you cool. yeah they were like some ratings for our haunted af episode which i was happy about until I had to badger my brother because he reviewed a good episode but accidentally rated it one star. So oh, I said, how dare I'm you? Reading then, sir. I, I replied. Yeah, you're you're bringing down our average. <laughs> I gotta give him shit, even though it happens, right? I think I told you when I saw this one author accidentally rated her own book one star on Goodreads. <laughs> oh no, you didn't tell me that really that would suck i ran across her like comments saying that she was rating it five stars and then kind of had an explanation in the comment of like normally i wouldn't go on here and rate my own stuff five stars but apparently it's really hard to take back an accidental one star rating on good pods or goodreads you know the book one yeah (laughs) yeah it was funny i think it was that Paula Braxton lady or whatever she did some time travel books and yeah some of them were like you touch the thing and you you know the history of it that's that what do they call that psych psychometry I think it's kind of like the psychic and you touch things and you see their history Mm. it's interesting yeah anyway Clearly, I should let Kelsey talk because I'm just going to let things go off the rails. <laughs> Forever and ever. Apparently, I'm chatty. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, today we have some, what, like missing witnesses, people that disappeared that were supposed to be key witnesses in trials, maybe that Ooh. kind of stuff coming up. Uh, that's right yes people who are witnesses or knew too much or possibly even just were thought to have known too much Ooh, um, not good. Mm-hmm. i know i was thinking of I, I put a title at the top of my notes earlier that was like deadly knowledge hmm. 
Uh, I just called my missing witnesses. <laughs> okay, see, now I want to know what yours is, yeah. Because you said witness yeah. protection last time, but you hadn't even picked your case yet at, when we recorded the last No, but um, mine's episode. crazy. Just <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> crazy uh, Kelsey coming in with a crazy case. <laughs> yeah, this ended up being on a few lists I was trying to look up of times where leading up to like an important trial people just disappeared um so that they couldn't oh. testify right yeah. like you said key witnesses yeah yeah that's a dangerous yeah. position to be in it can times. be for sure mm -hmm. um so this is uh the case it centers around this marvin gabrion uh and huh. he sucks but <laughs> okay <laughs> he's the bad guy of this whole story uh mm, he was okay. the fifth of six children uh the parents were marvin senior and elaine gabrion i like elaine oh, okay it's cute oh they, he was a junior too that's okay i think so there was no junior like by his name they just like didn't list it that way but mm. i would assume he probably was at least when he was younger okay yeah his father was described as an alcoholic who's reported that he ended up abusing um him and mm. i guess both of it, the parents were uh, often absent from the home and it left their their eldest daughters to actually take care of most of the younger siblings in the house oh no they were yeah. forced into the parent role mm -hmm. yeah it sucks parentification i think they call that these days <laughs> oh, okay yeah that sucks. Uh, yeah yeah uh his sister yvonne recalls a time uh where she witnessed or somebody witnessed their mother actually throwing a butcher knife at their dad uh, oh so it also sounds like it, it could be pretty like Fiery. physical and like yeah. volatile in that house too not just that they were like absent parents but yeah there was... yeah you don't want to get caught in the crossfire no, of a butcher you knife getting thrown across the room <laughs> yeah, you don't whether wanna... they meant to hurt them or not because like yeah i mean yeah stuff can happen i'm sure in the heat of the moment but someone's yeah, in real throwing danger, that's knives is not good no uh, no you have to pick that up with some serious intent <laughs> yeah yeah um so that's a little bit i could find about like marvin's life growing up um hmm. but next we'll talk about rachel timmerman uh so this is august 1996 a 19 year old or she might have been 18 at the time i'm not really sure when her birthday was um but rachel timmerman she was a resident of cedar springs michigan and she reported to the police that she had been raped and threatened by Marvin Gabrion. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, she told them how the previous evening she had been invited to a card game by a family friend. Um, so like somebody she knew named Wayne Davis, along with a classmate of Rachel's that was named Mikey Gabrion. Uh, Davis and Mikey arrived to pick up Rachel along with Mikey's uncle Marvin. So it's the four of them in the vehicle. Okay. Right yeah. Mikey's so Mikey. Uncle Marvin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how Marvin gets dragged into this. Uh, on the way to the house to go to this card game, Marvin ended up forcing his nephew Mikey and the family friend Davis out of the car, and he left with just Rachel in the vehicle. Um, where he oh. took her somewhere and then raped her. Uh, she told police that he had wow. threatened to kill her and her baby. So she has, uh, this point, her baby was only like two months old. Um, he threatened to kill her and the baby if she pressed charges or said anything to police. Oh my God. Yeah. She just gave birth two months ago when that happened? Yeah, it said she uh, had a brief relationship with a classmate um so mm. it wasn't yeah because some of the reports it like alluded to and they was like yeah and her baby and it, it seemed almost the time that like oh was this like his kid but that, yeah um, 
Yeah, yeah well, when he said not. end your baby, that was my first thought too. Is he threatening yeah. any possible result of this? Unholy no, so union. she had, yeah. yeah, she had only given birth like a couple months ago. Oh, that sucks. And yeah, um, so police thankfully like believed her. Um, I think they ended up talking to Mikey about it and uh, he came forward and he's like, yeah, like I got kicked out of the vehicle. So did Wayne Davis. So like they at least corroborated that side of the story. Like, right. Yeah, but they like, never like told they weren't anybody there. about it or. No, they told the police, <sighs> like the police asked them about it and they're like, yeah, she like we got kicked out of the car and he left with her. Like, we don't know what happened after that, but. That's what they were witness to. Uh, police, it took a while, but they were able to locate and arrest Gabrion in January of 1997. Um, so, like, months later, he had kind of been on the run. He didn't really have, like, permanent address. And sorry, was he, the, like, the adult? Much older yeah, than this is Marvin. Yeah, this is Marvin. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. yeah, I shouldn't put so much blame on them for not knowing what to do i guess after yeah. he took off with her but it sucks <laughs> uh so once they tracked him down they charged him with rachel's rape and he was felt held in jail until a friend ended up posting his bond in february 1997 um so he was in custody for like a month about a month um twice in may after he was released rachel reported to the sheriff that she had seen him and thought that he would kill her or like was there to oh. kind of like intimidate and threaten her right um one source did say that sometime during these few months between february and like the summer starting in june uh rachel was actually in jail for a parole violation Okay. Didn't really have a lot of details about that, but apparently she had a record of some kind as well. Mm -hmm. um, so jumping to June 1997, uh, Rachel and her 11-month-old daughter Shannon disappeared just two days before Rachel was set to testify against Marvin Gabrion. Oh um, no. Yeah. It's no, awful. not the kid. Yeah. Oh. So Fuck. by this point, like Rachel had filed the charges against Gabrion after she said that he had raped her the previous summer. Rachel had left the house with her daughter, telling her family she was going on a date with a man that she had met at work and that this guy had asked like to meet her baby. Um, but they had only really met like a couple days ago or something. And he's like, yeah, I want to take you out um, and bring your baby with you. So she's like, okay. Hmm. Um, this is what she's her. telling her family or whatever uh well this is no so this is not the rape this is like when she disappears this is what she's yeah. telling her family is she's <laughs> supposed to be going on a date with this guy um and he asked her to bring her and, baby along right right and that she told them that before she goes on the date that he wanted to yeah meet the baby yeah that's odd yeah um her yeah. family didn't really think anything was wrong for quite some time um it was like oh. at least a few days um because shortly after they last saw rachel they ended up receiving a letter from her um oh. that stated that she was planning to leave town and elope with that guy she went on a date with um some sources said it was a different guy um yeah uh the oh, prosecutor okay. that shouldn't work yeah. now it's not the 1800s anymore where you just kill people and then write letters saying that they decided to live in the countryside <laughs> right um, so yeah so because she because she disappeared just two days before the trial obviously she doesn't show up to the trial um yeah. then her parents received this letter and then the prosecutor and the judge of the trial also received letters from rachel in her handwriting like they all confirmed it was her actual handwriting stating oh, no. that she wanted or that the rape allegations were fabricated and that she wanted to drop oh. all charges against gabrion oh no um, so he's forcing her to write these somehow presumably yeah it was actually her writing them oh. um another letter identified the man she left with as being named delbert or dilbert um <laughs> okay 
and Rachel's family believed the letters were legitimate and then her disappear and as a result her disappearance was not investigated at the time and uh because of this charges against Gabrion were actually dropped oh my god yeah well that's a kick in the pants right just awful uh very frustrating yeah mm -hmm. it's it gets worse yeah, law work. I can only uh, imagine. <laughs> and it'll never a, get better. Uh, right? As a listener of true crime, you're just so primed to be so mad. Right? Like, I listened to, like, a two-parter on yeah. Sinisterhood today that was um, stalking and murder of a, a woman named Peggy. Guess what the fucking stalker guy's name was? Patrick. Oh, <laughs> oh great. Oh, no! But, yeah, it was also kind of yeah even more terrible and in, in, in a different one because they did have a relationship at one point but he basically oh, started okay. becoming obsessive before she even broke it off and so like it doesn't yeah. always fit the same pattern of like completely unrequited no. love or going insane like when you break up like he was pretty crazy from the get-go it was like yeah it was probably. Still frustrating how yeah you know the police just like really kind of failed and being like well we can't do anything you know Till something happens or till you're dead kind yeah of thing. oh just... that yeah those ones are some of the worst ones um, <sighs> when they do everything yeah. they can to report it to police and the police yeah not even it's... sometimes that they don't want to do anything it's like they can't no. do anything until the worst the happens and then yeah it's the like... laws really aren't there to back you up yeah. with it and stuff and yeah. it's it, it'd be worth covering for sure they did a really good job on it but yeah it, Oh, it'll wow. piss you off. That's for sure. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, okay, so jumping ahead, it's a month later. Uh, they actually discover Rachel's body in Oxford Lake. Uh, this was July 5th of um, 1997. Um, her body's found by two fishermen. Um, and it, like, doesn't have... A lot of craziness but the the details it does have is pretty bad it said that her body had been chained to cinder blocks um her hands had been cuffed behind her back and her face was wrapped with duct tape uh oh, okay yeah the yeah, corner never gonna be good but man no uh the coroner just... yeah the coroner ruled that she was actually alive when she entered the lake and had actually died oh. from drowning no please no that's yeah. really heartbreaking uh they never found like her 11 month old daughter shannon's body um <sighs> Fuck. but she's presumed dead um like as it stands the kid today. for two seconds that is so yeah. horrible i really really hate this case <laughs> yeah uh, so Marvin Gabrion was obviously the prime suspect in her death because they knew, like, she's supposed to testify against him. So obviously he's going to be the main suspect. Uh, they executed right. a search warrant on his home that ended up revealing keys to the padlock um, that was used for, like, the chains that were around Rachel's body. Ugh. Along... I mean, as if we didn't already know he was an idiot for being, like... Yeah, yeah, he's a very idiot. This will keep me in the clear and looking very innocent. Right. I'll just kill the girl that I allegedly raped, which I obviously fucking raped. <laughs> just yeah. gonna say it. Yeah. And uh, killed now. Yeah, so oh. they found the padlock along with concrete blocks that were stained with this paint or whatever that was also found on the ones like that were used. Oh. Um, so they like they had the lock now they have like this paint evidence and yeah. Marvin's nephew Mikey also directed police to a campsite that he knew his uncle frequented and that's mm -hmm. where they discovered some bolt cutters uh, chain duct tape a woman's hair clip and then nipples for like a baby bottle so uh, presumably uh -oh. that's where he like had at least like held her if not maybe that's where she was raped as well was at this campsite because they said he found they found his tent and that kind of stuff there it's pretty and remote area part of baby bottles as if the, as if the baby was going to be cared for which is yeah i don't really know what was up right about now. that 
Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Did something like? I mean, ugh, they never have a good plan if they're obsessed no. with someone or whatever it is. It's like, what are we gonna do after the fact? You don't know. You obviously you're like, if I can't have her, no one else can. And if she's gonna say something bad about me, then I'm just gonna kill her. Yeah, I don't really know else. what the the thing originally was. I think like raping her was just an opportunity, and then it just kept escalating from there. Um, yeah. So Gabrion's neighbors reported that he had a handyman named John Weeks. Uh, so they actually reached out to Weeks, uh, and they they couldn't get a hold of him, but they did talk to his girlfriend, who identified oh. Gabrion as a man that she by, knew by the name Lance, not Marvin Gabrion. She thought his name was Lance. Mm. And she okay. told police that Lance had left the area with her boyfriend Weeks, uh, and she hadn't heard from Weeks, her boyfriend, and was unsure how to get a hold of him. So now her boyfriend's gone missing, uh, which okay. is supposed to be like his handyman. <laughs> so like now another person associated right. with Gabrielle's gone missing. Uh, she also told police. Um, not only like her boyfriend's missing, that she had once overheard him on the phone with a girl named Rachel. And wow. when she had asked him about it, he said he was doing a favor for Lance. Um, and oh. uh, yeah, she, he said he was doing it for Lance, who was interested in being set up with her. Authorities at this point came to believe that John Weeks was the mystery man that Rachel had gone on the date with the night she was last seen. And it was all like prearranged by Gabrion. So it was like a full setup. That date, everything oh, was a setup. It wasn't because it wasn't John actually Weeks has a girlfriend already and was just helping his yeah. friend out. Yep. I wonder if he was really complicit then and knew what, what I he was gonna do to Rachel. <sighs> I think at some point he knew. Um, I mean, you gotta know yeah. that's not gonna be for like a completely clean reason. I need you to, to pretend no. to be like a fake date, you know, for yeah. something completely innocent. It's like, what? I'll be your wingman, but like, what? <laughs> yeah. You uh, want me to dig a six foot hole and then what? <laughs> like, no thanks. Right. <laughs> so yeah. police searched for. Um, so, like, because of this, like, remember the charges were dropped for Rachel's, like, rape. So now they have her Ugh. death. Now they have the disappearance of John Weeks. So police ended up searching okay. for Gabrion for, like, another two months, um, trying to interrogate him until finally this tip came in that he was set to receive a social security check from this post office in Sherman, New York. Um which is like out of state from where they are and FBI agents covertly staked out the post office and he was arrested as he was leaving it. Um, so it was like surprise arrest yeah. out of, out of like out of state and everything. Like that's cool. why you don't go to the post office. It was funny. You were talking about <laughs> getting something picked up from your house to return. Yeah. <laughs> Cause nobody wants to go to the post office anymore. No, but like, yeah, I love Not that if when it they costs them... me the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It you cost you all your up. time though, didn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. I was like, fuck. Maybe I should have just canceled him and like I'll drop this off. That was off the anyway, yeah. You were waiting yeah. around. I was like, it's like for the cable guy. Like you're stuck at your house. That sucks. Um yeah. But no, it's so funny when they get them caught like when they got caught doing something so mundane, like yeah. For like being pulled over, like for a parking ticket or whatever, and they find yeah. out they're like fucking Ted Bundy, and you're like, oh, <laughs> jackpot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so now he's arrested again. Uh, charges were made <laughs> against Gabrion for Rachel's death. Um, he was not tried for Shannon's death, Good. though court documents describe her murder as virtual, virtually uh, undisputed. Oh. So, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, Rachel wouldn't have let you know her kid go yeah like, probably dying to save her i'm sure just as a mother i don't know <laughs> like yeah um Ugh. yeah so if you thought that was the end of Gabrielle's story of course not he is also the main suspect in several other disappearances Gabrielle lived no. in a house owned by a man named robert allen who went missing in 1995 so like two years before this all happened 
Gabrielle continued. Okay. Oh, yeah. I guess another man? Wait, because this is now like the f- fourth person, I guess? It- yeah, this Rachel, is the fourth the person. Kid, John and him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But this guy would be the first. Uh, Gabrielle. Right. Yeah, he went missing in 1995, Probably. and Gabrion okay. continued to cash Alan's social security checks and lived in oh, his house yes. until 1997. I don't think Classic. he lived there all the time. Um, yeah, but the checks were getting cashed, yeah. That's yeah, so <laughs> that might have even been whose check he had been picking up um, in New Uh-oh. York when they arrested him, uh, because they do charge him for like social security fraud. So that's fun. Um, And then Wayne Davis, (laughs) if you remember, he was Rachel's um, friend that had and was going to go to the card game with him, and he testified to police like that he got kicked out of the vehicle and stuff. Um, Okay. Uh, Yeah. Um, uh, Wayne Davis himself went missing in February 1997. Uh, Davis was scheduled to testify against Gabrion at Rachel's rape trial. Um, so this is before Rachel even disappeared. Uh, oh. Davis's residence was undisturbed aside from a stolen stereo system. And it was determined that Gabrion had attempted to pawn it. Like it was found in his possession when they arrested him. Oh, okay. Yeah. The link? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gabrion's trials in 2002... Um, because he was, yeah, he was arrested in 1997, and then he was held until, like, 2002. It's, like, quite the delay. Um, wow. But. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, like, five years. Um, They ended up receiving national attention for both the brutality of his crimes and for the controversial sentence that he ended up receiving. Um, oh. Yeah, there's a lot more information about the sentencing, but. The prosecution presented testimony from multiple witnesses who described Gabrion's long history of violence and sexual assaults. Uh, Two witnesses testified that their homes had been set on fire following altercations with Gabrion. And okay, yeah. (laughs) So he has like full on like witness intimidation and all that shit. A long history of it, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Talk about Um, a list of priors like yeah he's gonna rap sheet this dude he's obviously quite the scumbag yeah uh another woman described how he pointed a rifle at her and her two-year-old son um and oh. then ended up following them in their car like he was following behind them both in their vehicles for like several miles um oh, jesus yeah and then <laughs> evidence implicated him in or evidence implicating him in multiple missing persons cases was also admitted to his trial. So that would be like John Weeks' disappearance, um, the disappearance of uh, Wayne Davis, the disappearance of that Alan, Alan Roberts, I think his name was. Um, Or Robert Allen, sorry. So like those three, even though they weren't like material to Rachel's death i guess they were also admitted being like he needs to go away forever he sucks um i know i hate it when they're like well that shouldn't be admitted to a trial because it's not relevant to this one it's like really when they were caught or say almost caught killing people in their past i always feel like that's a little bit relevant at least to if they could kill in the future and like Um, what the hell okay i'm just trying to keep this one all straight okay yeah, there's a lot. I know. Sorry, it's a it's a lot of names and everything. Um, no, it's crazy. So the trial also made big headlines for Gabrion's behavior during it. The judge denied Gabrion's right to fire his counsel and defend himself, like be his own lawyer, due to his erratic and disruptive behavior. Ha! Um, wow. Okay, so he tried to represent himself, and the judge said no. Well, they You're denied it. Too he, crazy. <laughs> he asked if he could, and he wanted to fire his counsel, and the judge said no because this is awful. Like, listen to what he does in court. In full view of the jury, he punched his defense attorney in the face and committed at least forty major infractions. Yeah, uh, that's a good look, buddy. <laughs> yeah. During the trial, Gabrion filed multiple motions using abusive and obscene language. He accused the judge of sleeping with and impregnating 13 and 14-year-old girls 
and called his lawyer and the judge satanic and Hitler. Uh, <laughs> he should definitely be his own lawyer, right? He'd be great Lord. at it. <laughs> he seems the type that would want to be, you know. Oh, yeah, know absolutely. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you hear they want to represent themselves, you're like, oh, okay. Full I did read a thing that said <laughs> um, his IQ was, I think, 121. Like, he was That's smart. on the higher side, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> Although I was like, what? <laughs> we know that test is you know, yeah. not, not the greatest barometer, but geez. Yeah. Um he doesn't so his... seem all that smart. <laughs> no, he, he's uh, he's wild. I don't know. So oh. yeah, meanwhile he's doing this. His defense was trying to argue that his behavior was the result of multiple car accidents that had caused brain injuries, as well as from his troubled childhood. Oh, uh, that's why he wanted to represent himself. He was going to go that route. I think so. Blame I mean, the childhood. Same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, since Rachel's body was found on federal land, it didn't matter that Michigan, where he was being tried, had abolished the death penalty. And as a result, mm -hmm. Marvin Gavrion was the first person sentenced to death by a federal court located in a non-death penalty state since the federal death penalty had been reinstated in 1988. So, oh, weird! Yeah, kind of like a loophole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like so, a non-penalty like national but like park, kind of like lake thing. So because right, she was on so... federal land, they're like, "We override you." So even though you don't have the death penalty, we can sentence him to death at the federal level. Federal land in a yeah uh, non-death penalty state. Okay, yeah, that yeah. is that is weird. You don't hear about that. I've never heard. No. Of that. <laughs> No, I mean, he was but the like, first good, person to be sentenced shit. Sorry. in that. So, um, and it had been almost like, well, it had been, what, 14 wow. years since the federal death penalty had been reinstated. And he was the first person it was used against that, like, wouldn't have had the death penalty because they were in a non-death penalty state. So, yeah. It's well, you said they got rid of it in 88? No, they brought it back. The federal death penalty was reinstated in 1988 oh god yeah that yeah. seems barbaric but okay i yeah. I yeah i'm more on the side of they find so many innocent people i can't really be pro cap yeah. punishment although some i think it has some to be like i feel like deserve it but yeah. it's hard because you know there's i feel like there has to be yeah. absolutely no question like they have to have done like 10 plus crimes that's like I dna know. everything otherwise no <laughs> which is which is hard sometimes because you know just the justice system as it is in every even every developed country like in canada it's not all that much different from the states really it's we're very similar people often say oh america this and that and we'll be like yeah well Canada's like <laughs> we're right there yeah. we're like we often follow suit to our southern neighbors and like yeah not the court system is definitely different and like I don't think ours is like what life sentence is necessary like 25 20. years is that is that in America though or is that here too because I'm always like yeah I don't know yeah they always talk about America's harsh sentencing and blah blah blah, blah so I don't know but yeah, that that dude definitely a piece of shit. So, oh yeah, I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> um, yeah. So he was sentenced to death penalty. He was also convicted of that social security fraud. Um, okay. while he was awaiting trial, he was sentenced for that in July of 1998 for using Allen's checks, and he was sentenced to five years in federal prison. Well, by the time he basically received the death penalty, he had already served four out of the five of those years. So, whatever um yeah Doesn't yeah matter. uh finally on july 5th 2002 exactly five years to the date of rachel's body being found like the exact date canoeists oh. found uh davis's body in twinwood lake another body of water in the same national forest where rachel was found oh um, wow. so this is wayne davis he was the other witness that disappeared that was also supposed to be at the trial this was before rachel disappeared um, and were they like actively searching for him at that point or was this just kind no, of a weird coincidence? Like these canoeists were just out canoeing and they just canoeists. found his body. Yeah, I didn't know <laughs> canoeists it. was a word, but 
that's what it said in the article. I was like, I have to include that. Because we're gonna learn we're gonna learn a new word today. Canoeists. Were they portaging? I know that's when you get out of the like river and carry the canoe. <laughs> oh no, I don't think so. I think they were in the water. All um, right, but that's a fun word. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, so his body, Wayne Davis, was uh his body was found in a body of water in the same national forest uh, where Rachel was found. And oh, Davis's okay. body had also been chained to cinder blocks. So he and was found five years later, you said. Five years later. Damn. So Rachel presumably could have been found five years later instead of a month after her disappearance. Which would have been really bad because I feel like he definitely would have gotten away with everything then if they hadn't have found her so quickly. I guess, yeah. Yeah, because like yeah. charges has been dropped. Nobody was looking af- looking for him until they found her. When so. people's like memories, yeah, start to become yeah. fuzzier the longer time goes on, for sure. It's yeah. way harder uphill battle um, for, for like cold case detectives. But it's yeah. crazy. It was exactly five years to the date of when they found Rachel's body. They found Wayne Davis. That's a um, synchronicity. Yeah, that's not a coincidence. Yeah, and it was like right around the time he got was getting sentenced too um because his trial was in 2002 and they found wayne davis's body in july of 2002 so it was like fuck you (laughs) like yeah poetic almost (laughs) yeah exactly um so updates for the other cases he's tied to so john weeks that handyman the guy that was presumably right set up to go out with rachel um his whereabouts are still unknown it's presumed that he was a witness to rachel's murder like and oh was somewhat God. involved and gabrion was the last person to see him alive in june of 1997 so we don't know because i don't trust this gabrion guy like he could have killed no. him too uh, yeah. okay <laughs> just one. Uh, presumably, yeah. yeah, he did kill him. Uh, yeah. In 2006, Rachel's mother said that she would prefer to spare Gabrion's life if he would just tell police where to find Shannon, the daughter, the baby's remains. Oh. Um, that was according to the Associated Press. Um, she would, and she, sorry, say it again. Um, sorry. The mother said that she would prefer to spare Gabrion's life if he would just tell police where to find. The baby's remains okay yeah she'd rather yeah. take the death penalty off the table if she could find it yeah yeah um according to court documents while gabrion was awaiting trial for rachel's murder he gave another prisoner a map of oxford lake where rachel's body was found on which he had written body of three one found so they kind of believe what? he's referring like that like Wayne Davis was there, Rachel was there, and Shannon would be there. And that one had only been found at that point. Yeah, because they really had really bad Wayne grammar Davis's. though. Yeah, Body right. Three. One found. Yeah. <laughs> Body um, of water. <laughs> yeah. Three in it. Three okay, bodies, sorry. one I, found. Yeah. You know me. I joke because it's uncomfortably horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm almost done. Um <laughs> Okay, great. Court- no. <laughs> Uh, the court documents also said Gabrion told two inmates that he had killed the baby because there was nowhere else to put it. Oh, um, yeah, sir. Just, you fucker. Like, yeah. you told him to tell her to bring the baby. You knew what you were going to do. Like, you don't then just be yeah. like, because you could have you could have spared the baby's life. You intentionally told her to bring the baby. Otherwise, she wouldn't have brought the baby on a first date oh that part is so niggling at me every time you say it yeah i'm like that is so bizarre it's unfortunate that that red flag didn't you know stop it in its tracks yeah i thought it was really what uh no like a if it's a first date how do you even know i have a fucking baby i'm like wouldn't that come out like later anyway it's yeah, just it's so bizarre and so well sad. they had met they had met like at her place of work so maybe he had she had told him that she oh, had a at baby that point, yeah had, okay right okay. but presumably it was john weeks it wasn't gabrion so i don't know um, yeah yeah they were really trying to fucking double tie her screw her yeah right. yeah 
Um, and then Marvin Gabrion re remains the main suspect in the disappearances and uh, assumed deaths of Robert Allen, John Weeks, and Shannon Timmerman, um, as wow. well as uh, being the killer of Wayne Davis. Um, but he has never been charged for any of these disappearances or even for Wayne Davis's death. Um, and all of them actually remain unsolved, like officially listed as unsolved. No. Yeah, so he's never been charged for Wayne Davis's death, even though, like, the cinder blocks and everything were the same, and they said he was found in a similar manner, so, like, presumably he could have been chained up and everything as well. And then but they just they never, never did anything the... about it. Yeah, and you said they never found the John Weeks guy either? Nope, he and is. that Robert Allen guy that disappeared before everybody else that he was cashing the social security checks of, they never found him, and they never found him. Yeah, they're him. all tied up in it. Like, yeah. it's gotta be. That's why I'm like, so many people, they're like, this dude's a Ugh. serial killer, and they're all fucking witnesses. Yeah. Everybody was a witness to something, and all of them disappeared. Right. Like, right. everyone. Ah! They all He's... knew too much! Yeah, it was crazy. Because... It's like... Just because they happen to be... Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, you can be friends with some petty criminals, but they're not all necessarily going to stab you in the back and fucking... Or drag you into their mess. You. Yeah, chop yeah. you up into pieces. Like, my God. Yeah. I've, I've had been friends with some less than savory characters, but it didn't, like... Yeah. Like everyone's not all the scum of the earth. And then you can't just tell by looking at someone, obviously, right? Yeah. You know, they could be, like, the, look like the most upstanding citizen and still, like turn around and they fucking stab you to death and you're like okay yeah <gasps> i just thought this one this one stood out when i was looking at all the lists because i was like how many witnesses did he kill i'm like he killed like three witnesses <laughs> like that's a lot and they were all at different times so. yeah i'm like that's yeah am a i lot editing of... this one i feel like i'm gonna have more thoughts if i <laughs> when i hear this again <laughs> i need to digest maybe it, yeah <laughs> yeah it was pretty okay. crazy when i was reading it i was like this one stood out i was like i have to do this one as Twisty. sucky it as it all was yeah just like yeah. everything just kept snowballing and then everybody gets fucking killed like yeah yeah you have to be care careful who you what i was gonna say work for <laughs> work with i don't know yeah be friends with don't if somebody yeah. asks you to fake date somebody don't do it because he killed that guy too yeah. that was john weeks it's just his friend and then like you know clearly like rachel as women we're almost always taught to be on our guard but you can't always you can't always be out for yeah. every snake especially if they hire other people to be a exactly. fake first date for you and all this stuff that you're like yeah. not expecting someone to go to the lengths to do that right i think one of the sources even said she had told her parents she was super excited to go on a date with somebody because she didn't think she'd find somebody that wanted to go on a date with somebody that had an 11 month old Ugh. yeah yeah don't bring it up that's a second date kind of you know you don't have to put that yeah, on your right? dating profile if they're a good enough guy they can deal with it when you tell them on date number two or three Oh, yeah. Not that I'm saying, you know, it's obviously not her fault. But no, fuck, not sucks. at all. She was completely manipulated. Uh, by, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Everybody. It's, we, like, you know, I often think when hearing true crime cases, you know, like other people will say on podcasts and stuff like, yeah, I've, I've made decisions where it's like, I'm probably lucky to be alive. Right. Like, yeah. you, know, you hang out with different people. You never know what someone's going to do. You don't know what everybody you go and party with and you know that introduces you yeah. to everyone else like yeah even in a small town like shit happens but Ugh, damn okay now yeah. i gotta follow that case what the fuck yeah <laughs> snap good luck <laughs> well i'm gonna need a little break then um yeah. we'll be back for part two well all our longtime listeners will definitely know that uh recording a podcast is not always easy <laughs> no <laughs> no so uh you, you better believe like when we find something we like that we're gonna probably stick to it and not look for anything else um so yeah that's one of the reasons why i love zencaster uh when we tried it we were like okay finally i wanted to have the video 
and it's what up to 4k video which is pretty yeah. effing cool i can see every pore on kelsey no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i hope not <laughs> But it's great video and like just really easy on this one. So like once we stopped recording on our our phones, so I just I was like, yeah, this is the this is the one for us. So even though sometimes our computers fuck up, it always <laughs> comes through for us in the end because uh, we've never lost like a recording knock on wood and anytime we've had to use it it's just been really great and really easy and everything's just recorded when we wanted it to which is you know it's a lot uh to ask for when you podcast as much as we do <laughs> yeah it's nice that each of us has our own separate audio recording that you can download and edit so it makes <laughs> When one of us what? is uh, doing something <laughs> or has something, it's easy. You can edit that out even with the other person was talking because you have two separate tracks that you can edit. Yeah, it's one of the reasons we love Zencaster. It definitely, it makes it a lot easier. And the audio quality is also a lot better uh, than any of the other th uh, programs we tried using in the past. Yes, it is the best. So go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code cryptic and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same easy experience as we do for all our podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Keep it cryptic. All right. Well, welcome back to part two of uh, deadly knowledge. <laughs> Something witness crimes. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Mine's uh, like I said. Yeah. It uh, killed for what they knew. Possibly. We shall see. I had not heard of it. Okay. Um. Just gave it a little googs to see what was out there, and I came up with the story of one. Mary Pinchot Meyer. Um, it occurs to me that I always assumed that's how you said the middle part of her name. <laughs> Does kind of look like a French spelling. Gordo's been kicked out of the mosh pit for bad behavior. If anyone else yeah. acts up. <laughs> My dog was briefly doing the um, scratching his claws on the well, we put oh. an extra rug outside the door because he would do it outside the door of our bedroom on the carpet too much and stuff. Yeah. So at least he usually does it on the rug now. Because he hates having his toes nails clipped, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of course, they're always too stupid long, but anyway. All right. This is the story of Mary Pincho Meyer and Mary Eno Pincho Meyer, as she was was born no uh i'm full naming her oh okay <laughs> i guess she was born mary eno pincho into a wealthy family in new york city on october 14th of 1920 so we're going back a bit oh 100 yeah, years yeah <laughs> right um uh the roaring 20s no her father amos pincho was a lawyer and a member of the progressive party and he also funded the socialist magazine the masses so <clears throat> yeah he he said some things and did some stuff and her mother also was i think outspoken because she was also a journalist she was ruth pickering pincho and she oh. wrote for magazines such as the new republic and the nation that's cool I know. I was like, I bet they had some lively dinner conversations. <laughs> yeah. Some nice dinner parties. She probably hated it when she was a kid. It was probably boring. I mean, but you can't put a price on good discussion, though, because especially yeah. nowadays, it seems like you can't have a good, I, I don't know, debate without, like, they say not to bring up politics and stuff at dinner, but unless you, like, directly insult someone, it used to be, like, you seem like you could discuss some of that stuff without it getting too yeah. crazy. <laughs> uh, 
or contentious, but um, she had a Mary had a sister named Antoinette, which I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's it's almost Marie and Antoinette, it, but yeah. it's Mary <laughs> and Antoinette, and they were raised in Milford, Pennsylvania, um, and oh, uh, more about her family. Her she was the niece of a. Gifford Pinchot, who was the two-time governor of Pennsylvania. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it's she's so pretty, uh, pretty known family then. Probably. Yeah, she's yeah. she's a socialite. You'll see. I, I'm kind of burying the lead, but I want you to get to know her as a person before we find out what. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, because in the end, you don't want to become known for just your death, right? It sucks, you know. Yeah. Um, she studied at the prestigious, I think it's Brearley School. I don't know. That's how, it's, how, it. how it's spelled. Yeah. They said it was prestigious, but then I they said she went on to study at Vassar, which I have heard of. And I was like, that's one of the big ones, right? Like, yeah. Vassar, Stanford, Harvard, Yale, all those American ones, I guess. And she went on to marry... Uh, Cord Meyer, who w- went on to become a CIA agent, I guess. So that's oh, where really? she gets the Meyer. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yes. Oh, yeah. She's all up in the Washington biz. Wow. Okay. Um. Yeah, I know. Never heard of her, though. So they married on April 19th of 1944. Uh, they're like, woohoo, the war's over. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably like, what, 20? I don't know. She was like yeah, tw- born in the 20s. Yeah, 1920s. Yeah. Okay. So, so she was like 24. Right, nice. Right, right. Okay. She didn't get married um, at friggin' 16. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Exactly. Um, she was working as an editor at the time for the Atlantic Monthly. Oh, so taking after her parents in the nice. journalism. <laughs> Good for uh, her. Women in like it's such a, a good role, like editors and journalists. Like that's awesome. That's cool. That's one of those professions where it it started out so noble, like lawyers yeah. and the ones that keep it, you know, that like still have their pride in it and stuff. Oh it's yeah. Like, good for you. Cause like Yeah. You know, they can degrade so fast, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit. I have been just reading what um, the Prince Harry's book. And then I was like, oh, obviously he's had a contentious relationship with the press all his life. Can you imagine being a royal and you're just like. No, I would hate On it. stage from birth. Like, yeah. Yeah, that would be tough. <laughs> yeah. No wonder, like, yeah. all those most of the the child stars like the disney stars all those like they're all royally fucked they're all arrested for something they're all have some child stars notoriously yeah Um, notoriously like how could you not how could you not (laughs) get fucked up in some way right yeah drew barrymore she's one of the ones where they're like she was child star and then you know obviously had a rebellious stage and then they're like look at her now (laughs) yeah yeah. You can turn it around, but you can. And I feel like I can relate to her rebellious stage because like flashing people on David Letterman, I'm like, okay, yeah, been through the flashing phase. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, so yes, yeah, she got married, decided to quit work after the birth of her children. It was around this time that she took her art seriously and began attending the Art Students League of New York to study painting. I took this from an okay. article. Some so there will be some quotes. Um, there was a lot of good quotes you could find, nice. which is always nice when you can find yeah good articles. Um, so her husband Cord Meyer was a Marine Corps lieutenant who was elected as the president of the United World Federalists. Oh, I forgot about that because I don't know what those mean. I've United heard the Federalists, Federalists before, but I can't remember what it was yeah i've heard of the federal reserve i've heard of federal (laughs) sorry Uh, no i'm not gonna tangent um and mary ended up writing for the uwf journal so okay so they're both 
working in the same UWF world. <laughs> and apparently, uh, Cord then joined the CIA in 1951. So this was after they were married. But however, whether he had secretly worked for them earlier is not known, but it's it's obviously speculated about. Okay. Yes. <laughs> As with much things that involve the CIA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. After his inclusion in the CIA, the family moved to Washington, D.C. And Mary there had no pr- problem be- in being critical about the CIA, although her husband still worked for the organization. So she was very outspoken, I gather. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't love it. They're obviously, you're not going to probably agree with everything your own government does, let alone the top secret organizations. (laughs) Yeah, ones that operate uh, kind of with no consequence, no public consequence at least. Right, under the radar, on the black books, yeah, yeah. black ops. (laughs) Um, They did eventually have, uh, I guess, three kids. from what I could gather, a Michael, a Quentin, and a Mark. But unfortunately, uh, one of them did pass away at age nine. I believe it was Michael in a car accident. So that was very, very oh. hard on them. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah, I believe that was the start of the end of their marriage. Um, oh, okay. Which does tend to. Sorry, I had to uh, <laughs> move my pages. What am I doing on here? I have it printed out, Kelsey. Why yeah, am I reading like, it on the page? On the I computer. don't know. I, I haven't printed out my last like 10 notes. <laughs> I can just read it here. It's fine. <laughs> okay. By 1954, they were living next to the Kennedys. Yes, those Kennedys. <laughs> wow. Okay. They rich. Yeah, they're moved into next to Jack and Jackie's. Um, This was not the first time she'd met JFK, however. They had met as teens at a dance. Um, and it was a prep school dance. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we went to school together. Save room for Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with a ruler what? measuring the distance between... <laughs> Between their hips or something. Save room for Jesus. Oh, probably. I think some of those religions didn't even think that you could dance because it was too sexual. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bare skin touching. Damn, you get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Put that pillow up in between you in bed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, alleged, or allegedly. I don't know. She apparently had like another date that night, but uh, he yeah allegedly cut in on her date i don't know if that meant he just wanted Ooh. to dance with her or whatever but scandal that's what everything said there were, okay one of the pictures that i did put up because i was like there's a couple pictures and there's one of her and her wedding to cord meyer and it's like very like 40s with like the gloves and she's just wearing a okay. simple little dress or whatever um Oh, her wedding dress is cute. It's like non traditional. It's like little. Yeah, is it like floral. a patterned one? I was like, it looks oh. like flowers or something. It's like so cute. You're like, oh, you just guys went to, down to the courthouse or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she looks very happy, I thought. Um, <clears throat> there was a quote that said, She was a true American aristocrat. The beautiful daughter, Mary, was raised on Park Avenue, educated at the finest schools, a debutante, basically an American princess, end quote. Ooh. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> She's got, like, Princess Diana hair, too. Oh. <laughs> sort of, like the white, like the, the blonde and everything. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, like, the hairstyle yeah. and the cut a little bit. I think her Mary's is a little <laughs> bit longer, but... Right. I mean, yeah, if she had been still alive in the 80s. Because <laughs> yeah. sometimes, yeah, the princess died, I'd be like, oh, my mom had short blonde haircut. <laughs> that reminds me of her. Um, okay, so that's how they end up. You know, he's CIA, and they end up living in uh, a precinct of Washington called Georgetown. That's where they live near the Kennedys. And 
Mary and Jackie end up being like friends where they'll go on like daily walks together and kind of hang out nice. and stuff. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, but then, as I said, they did suffer the tragedy when their son, Michael, uh, was killed. This was <clears throat> um, in December of 1956. I have a quote about that. On the 18th of December, 56, Mary's nine-year-old son, Michael, was hit by a car on the curve of highway near the house and killed. Um, Mary heard the screech of tires and the screams of her oldest son. She raced down the hill toward the awful scene. The driver who had struck Michael had become hysterical. An ambulance arrived, but it was too late. Mary would, for the last time, hold and accompany Michael to the hospital but not before she paused to comfort the driver who had struck her son, her rare compassion anchored in some deeper dimension. Jeez. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, wow. Wow. Totally princess die. Like very, like just like so yeah. passionate. Yeah. Um, but so begins the rift that their marriage cannot overcome. And they divorce for good. Uh, two years later, I guess in 1958. Okay. <clears throat> That's understandable. Yeah. I mean, the death of like a child almost always ruins. Right. Me. It seems so, more often than not. Something they can't overcome. I find they use it a lot in. Is it just me or is it to happen a lot in horror movies and stuff where it's like the premise where a lot of times they're getting over the death of a child or the start of a movie? Yes. I don't know. It just yeah. seems like a trope almost. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously just so horrible. Like, yeah. Um, so after that, um, oh yeah, I just have another quote that talked about how Mary continued to live with her two sons in the family home of Langley Commons. She took up art in her sister Antoinette Pinchot, Antoinette Pinchot Bradley. That's quite the moniker. <laughs> yeah. And her husband, Ben Bradley, allowed her to set up a studio in their converted garage. Mary also began a relationship with the abstract artist, Kenneth Noland. Mary also got to know Robert Kennedy, who had moved into his brother's house, Hickory Hill, after John F. Kennedy and Jackie Kennedy moved out in 1960. Okay. So then she yeah, obviously kind of knows all the Kennedys and stuff. And then her name first appears in the White House logs in October of 1962. So that was most likely the start of, you know, her more intimate relationship with John Robert. F. Kennedy. Yeah. Oh, okay. JFK. You know, the womanizer. <laughs> okay. I thought she was with Robert, didn't you say? Or she's just friends with his brother. Uh, it said Mary also got to know Robert Kennedy, who had moved into his brother's house. Oh, but she's still okay. She's still living next door to JFK and Jackie Kennedy. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, she's okay. Kind of very Kennedy adjacent right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, White House counsel Meyer Feldman told people that Mary was like a part of the furniture so apparently she what? was there quite a lot oh, I know it's, I always, it's like it's very fun. derogatory isn't it I don't find it very flattering I don't know why they no. use that expression all the time just to mean like someone was there a lot because it just seems like I feel like, like very that's like when you say someone's nasty. like used and that they're yeah like getting pushed around and like sat on there's just a piece of furniture in the room like maybe it's not really great maybe i should to them yeah 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 yeah. i think they meant she was just there a lot so that's why i included it but i didn't yeah. i wasn't wow. trying to be like <laughs> oh <okay>. you know <laughs> but yeah it's it's gross um <laughs> So yes, then Mary's sister Antoinette went by Tony. Cute. Aww. I like that. <laughs> right. Um, and I mean, if you're saddled with Antoinette, that's quite the moniker in today's day and age. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people have troubles with Alana, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think um, I could spell Antoinette properly, so it's well, it's very French. Um so as I said, she was married to this Ben Bradley guy who was apparently a co close confidant of uh, JFK. So they're all uh, okay. They're yeah, all... very close to kind of like the family, I guess. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's why most of the articles will come up just saying 
that she was killed because she was his mistress that knew too much. But I really didn't want to, you know, lead with that as, you know, a way to remember this woman that seems like a really cool person. So, yeah. Yeah. But obviously, yeah, we're going to get to that. So she was an artist, a free thinker, an occasional pot and acid partaker. I was like, she was just ready for the 60s. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, and I think that's why he liked her. She was very bright, spoke her mind, and a lot of people said they were had said to have had like a sort of intellectual kinship. Um, yeah, you know, got to be intellectually stimulating too. <laughs> um, I told you I read the uh, the House of Kennedy that I got from the library. It was pretty interesting. That that whole family's oh. had a lot of ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah isn't there like siblings that they just shipped off because they had mental illnesses and that kind of stuff and they're just like goodbye well rosemary had a lobotomy so yeah there's yeah. a lot to like unpack i heard about that one before yeah yeah and then they, they they talk about the kennedy curse and yeah this definitely isn't the only death and then you get like a, several of them were assassinated several died in plane crashes like it's all very damn yeah kind of interesting when you kind of break it down that i enjoyed the book but um okay. yeah we could we could definitely make it <laughs> an episode about um some of that stuff for sure maybe not so much the <laughs> you know the assassination of jfk which has been done and done and done it's a yeah lot to, cover but the stephen king book was really good anyway um i'll kind of touch on it because it's kind of adjacent to this right but so yeah because it was kind of like well known that he had affairs but as i was going to get into here it's like did even family know that they were having an affair at the time it doesn't seem so the the brother-in-law there ben bradley said that he didn't no he knew she had like a boyfriend but he didn't know anything about jfk was her boyfriend until after her death and the discovery of her diary okay that's a little it was kept on the down low i would say i mean Um, how did his wife feel about all that right there's some in that in the the house of kennedy book and like um i think one of her sisters-in-law one of the other kennedy wives was like yeah, yeah, they're pretty known for doing that, but yeah, you married one, you kind of got to decide if you want to live with it or not. Like, it's kind of like accepted. Oh, okay. You'll see, I think someone compares it to like the Mad Men era. It's like, yeah, yeah. very much that like patriarchal bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's not great. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. My next quote this i forgot what their first name was but their last name was burley and they said what was known about the affair they said well it's hard to say my research led me to believe kennedy was a sex addict and like the mad men of the tv show and she was very upper class and ahead of her time in terms of modern art personal style using marijuana and lsd very much a precursor to the culture we associate with the 60s um yeah yeah people knew about it after i think <laughs> yeah i bet the people closest the bodyguards always knew what was going on oh sure. yeah they always bodyguards and the fucking maids they always know right i'm sure they'd have something to say about her marilyn monroe i'm like there was definitely stuff going on there yeah we could unpack <laughs> um so jfk apparently wrote a letter to mary in october of 1963 asking if mary would please come visit him in boston or on the cape um of course this was one month before his death when you look at it yeah i was like is that right but you know they're right like because it was november of 63 so it it doesn't ever look like november because they're in texas right (laughs) when he yeah yeah it's weird Um, But this letter asking her to come visit was never posted, kept by his personal secretary, and eventually sold for almost $89,000. I was going to say, if anybody has a copy of that letter, it 
would be sold for a lot, but that's not a lot. Right. That's way less than I thought it was going to be. Really? Yeah, I suppose. Hey. Yeah. We thought Beanie Babies were going to go for that. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes um, just random letters could go for a lot of money, true. but a letter to his mistress a month before he dies. Yeah. Fuck, that should be like the most money. <laughs> Like, right. considering how obsessed people are, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're obsessed <laughs> with the Kennedys. Like, I mean, like, I gotta say that's probably why I picked it once it came up. Like, yeah. I'm like, I've never heard of this. Um, so in April of 1962, Mary famously, I guess, visited Timothy Leary. At least it came up a lot. A former Harvard University psychology lecturer who later said she asked him how to run an LSD session. Um, <laughs> quote unquote. I love it. <laughs> I guess he was a pioneer of the acid world. I don't know. She believed it could help open the minds of some men in power, perhaps help broker some peace through some empathy and camaraderie, which they do yes. say psych psych psychedelics kind of help break down your ego. You know? Yeah. Couldn't hurt. <laughs> um, apparently she and her parents were also known pacifists. So I do know that people say Kennedy was pretty against, you know, going back into war and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. It seems like the war machine makes a lot of money for people. So a lot of people behind oh, yeah. the scenes are not against, are, are not for that. <laughs> Think, no. Don't they say, like, uh, I think I remember in school them saying, like, the economy is never quite as stimulated as when a country is preparing to go to war. Because there's just so yeah. many jobs and so many weapons and everything that they're building and people are getting trained and more people have jobs and everything. It's part of the, the scary things that we don't like to look at as much because yeah. we like to condemn conflicts and promote world peace but then well yeah we'll, it, see, well maybe i'll do a patreon so many series jobs on... and everything it's so scary yes and the, i've learned there's a whole military industrial complex and why they'll sometimes feature like military people at the start of this fucking hockey games and stuff and how it's all tied together and oh you know, yeah they'll benefit and whatnot and I was gonna say this one would this one would have to be a Patreon one, but like I do a series maybe on the times the like the false flag operations that have supposedly got, been led to get the Americans into the wars, like not just nine eleven, but others like the World War One where they like sunk that one ship with like American you know people on it so they could be like oh now we're in the war whatnot shit like yeah. that like just excuses so that they can you know the the rich people can get richer not that every not that the you know every per every every man wants to get in the war but all the fucking build a burgers do and whatnot like yeah every time but anyway we'll put that one behind a paywall so i don't get <laughs> i don't get targeted <laughs> yeah <laughs> for speaking my mind on that so yeah she was a pretty cool chick and yeah i just had a little bit more just trying to get to know her before her eventual ending um they said in april 1962 mary meyer began visiting timothy leary okay which i touched on he's the lsd guy the director of research projects at Harvard University, as they say here, according to his biography, Flashbacks, fun title. <laughs> yeah. She appeared to be in her late 30s, good looking, flamboyant eyebrows, piercing green blue eyes, fine boned face, amused, arrogant, aristocratic. <laughs> Leary okay. goes on to claim that she said, what? <laughs> I said, okay. I know he's so descriptive. Did we ask for that? No. <laughs> um, he says, she said, I want to learn how to run an LSD session. I have this friend who's a very important man. He's impressed by what I've told him about my own LSD experiences and what other people have told him. He wants to try it himself. <laughs> he wants to do <laughs> drugs. Do the drugs. 
just say no. Oh, wait, that was what? <laughs> A couple presidents after that? Reagan, maybe? <laughs> yeah. One of the wives. <laughs> um, so she was living in Georgetown and took her daily walk along the riverside of the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. And it was there on the 12th of October, 1964, two days before her 44th birthday, that she was shot dead on her daily walk along the towpath, as they called it. Damn. Yeah. Um, there was an article by a Lance Morrow, a writer for the Smithsonian now, but remembers being a uh, junior reporter at the time. He said a cub reporter. He, he has an article and it was like, he was there that day. He said, it was half past noon. I was a cub reporter on the Washington Star. In the classically scr scruffy press room at police headquarters, I heard the radio dispatcher direct cruisers 25 and 26, which I recognized as homicide squad cars, to the CNO Canal. I alerted the city desk, drove to Georgetown, ran to the wall overlooking the canal, and saw a body curled up in a ball on the towpath. Damn. Yeah, I'm like, you were, like, there. Um, two men who had been changing a tire nearby told me they had heard a shot, a cry for help, a second shot, and had called the police. Wow. There were no cops with the body yet. Yeah. I was like, oh, but anyway. Um, but in the distance between the Potomac and the canal, I saw the lines of the police dragnet closing in along the towpath from Weast. From west and east. From west and east. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Um, yeah, it's so weird. He's just like, because I had played there as a boy, I knew there was a tunnel under the canal a few hundred yards west of where the body lay. I knew the killer was still at large and might also have known about it. But the tunnel would be the quickest way for me to get to the other side of the canal to where the body was. I pushed aside the vines at the tunnel entrance and hurried through, heart pounding, and burst into sunshine on the other side. I approached the body of Mary Pinchot Meyer and stood over it, weirdly and awkwardly alone, as the police advanced from either direction. And then they accused me of her murder, and I went to prison. You would think so, but I'm guessing he's white. <laughs> <laughs> and lucky he didn't have a gun on him. Oh, we'll get to it. They don't need to find a gun to accuse the nearest black man. Oh, no. oh my god, really? Yeah, um, okay, so he says she lay on her side as if sleeping. She was dressed in a light blue fluffy angora sweater, pedal pushers, and sneakers. I remember we used to call them pedal pushers and then capris and flood pants, whatever. <laughs> Oh, they've, they've gone through I so many ever different. Called them capris, right? Yeah, they're short. Pit. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> they come up to your ankles, you know. Um, she was an artist and had a studio nearby, and she had gone out for her usual lunchtime walk. I saw a neat and almost bloodless bullet hole in her head. She looked entirely peaceful, vaguely patrician. She had an air of Georgetown. I stood there with her until the police came up. I held a reporter's notebook. The cops from the homicide squad knew me. They told me to move away. So apparently that's all that saved him. Stop <laughs> fucking contaminating the crime scene, dude. I know, like, thank God he didn't touch something. Like, wash it up, mop it up! <laughs> yeah. So yeah, of course he had his handy dandy notebook, and I guess they recognized him, so they're like, Steve, Blue's Clues! <laughs> <laughs> we got you uh, but apparently nobody else was around I mean other than the what he said there was two guys that yeah changing a tire changing a tire yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll come back to that um, no one else was around except for the one man that they found nearby in a wooded area the one black man wet from the river apparently uh, from falling in is what he said. Uh, they definitely booked him for her murder with basically no other notion of evidence. Uh, his name was Ray Crump. Oh my god. I'd be like, yes, I heard gunshots. I jumped in the <laughs> fucking river. I'm like... Ugh. I don't know what to think about it. I, I felt like I could have done deep dive on 
his case and stuff because yeah. yeah, a lot. yeah they didn't find a weapon on him um they never found a weapon in the area or anywhere in fact on oh, the case okay. sadly he told them he had been fishing and accidentally fell in um but I guess his story did change a little bit, which made them suspicious. Like he then said he had got drunk and passed out and fell in, not like fighting with his fishing rod. So a little oh, bit okay. different. So. Yeah. But basically the long story short of that, long story short of that was he was later acquitted due to lack of evidence with the help of his badass lawyer. Um, Fuck, which I was supposed to have her name because she was like this super cool black lady. And I was like, what? Is that just in time for Black Heritage Month? Probably not by the time this comes out. No. (laughs) Wait, can I, I'll just see if I can bring up her name because I meant to put it back in my notes, but I didn't. Oh, Oh yeah, she had a cool name, Round, Round Tree. Okay, yeah, she was this badass black lady lawyer named Dovey Johnson Roundtree, which is an awesome name. <laughs> cool. And she was apparently, like, yeah, a pretty cool, like, civil rights um, advocate and stuff and, like, worked on his case pro bono and fucking got him off. And it was pretty impressive. So Yeah, I should her. never have been charged. That was ridiculous. <sighs> From what I could find, yeah, it literally could not give me any other reason why they would book him for that and i was just like what the fuck or what (laughs) well there was also a white guy there but just because he's a journalist but he was like standing over the body but like you know because you knew him it's fine (laughs) yeah um okay so roundtree gets him off but what spurs on the conspiracy theories is the uh proximity to jfk of course and then the timeline to the uh, release of the results of the investigation into his death so she died about a year or so after his assassination okay and then she died very soon after the investigation came out which was called the warren commission it was apparently released about three weeks before her death so that was like the the be all and okay we've investigated his death and this is what we found and like no it wasn't the cia it was just you know the one guy and the one shooter and whatever is that when it came out to the public that they were seeing each other or had it come out before then i think it probably started coming around out around that time because it didn't seem known when they were together but i'm not too sure to be honest yeah but people definitely seem to think that okay it coincides a lot with when the when the investigation report came out on that on his death and then oh it's open and shut like blah 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 yeah um the yeah the i mean the commission was apparently taken seriously it was the chief justice of the United States, Earl Warren. That's why they called it the Warren commission, I guess. And then they had two U S senators on the crew, two members of the house of representative representatives, and then two private citizens, but they were Alan W. Dulles, the former director of the CIA and who the like Washington airport is named after. And um, this John J. McCloy, former president of the international bank for reconstruction and development. Okay, whatever that so it is. wasn't just like John <laughs> normal Smith city. from yeah That's me it. and you yeah <laughs> two true crime podcasters <laughs> yeah um the 888 page report said that it was just Lee Harvey Oswald and only him who killed JFK and I mean I, I'm all I'm you know I love a good conspiracy theory but I, I remember reading the Stephen King book where he talked about the 11 63 where the premise was that the guy could go back in time through yeah. a little wormhole and he was like, I've been trying to stop the assassination. Um, and he's like, basically, like, I was forced to come to the same conclusion. Like, I, he, 
you know, researched Lee Harvey Oswald's movements up until the assassination, blah, blah, blah. And talks about it a lot in the book. I do remember that. And I was like, well, you know, like he was forced to come to the assassination, come to the conclusion that it was not a conspiracy and it was just Lee Har Harvey Oswald. Um, yeah. And I mean, like, we do know that he did, like, he tried to kill at least one public figure before JFK, which is true because he tried to shoot the former U.S. Army General Edwin Walker through his window and failed. Uh, oh, okay. so that was his practice run yeah he like tried to shoot him through a window like just at home and the bullet hit the windowsill and apparently he used the exact same gun uh, um oh this can't be how you say it a man liquor tarcano rifle <laughs> looks very german man liquor <laughs> But apparently it was the same gun, this kind of rifle bought under a false name to take Kennedy's life exactly. Like a year later, rather, I should say. Okay. So, but if there was no conspiracy by the CIA or anyone else to kill JFK, why would Mary Meyer Pincho, Mary Pincho Meyer need to be silenced at all? What the hell did she knew, knew that they suspected, you know? Like just because she was you know someone yeah. that slept with jfk i mean apparently there were a few people that did that other than jackie yeah so um it's very um, weird it's because it's yeah. unfortunately to this day still very much fucking unsolved i'm I hate to break it oh, to you guys okay. yeah and it's what how many years fucking later like yeah. yeah that's really weird the timing of it like yeah. releasing the report and their findings and then her husband being because uh, it was her husband that was cia right? he was cia for a time exactly yeah yeah, yeah. So and she they was found not a it, fan of the cia <laughs> and, yeah so know. like if, even if they had found like how they found the cia not responsible somebody might not have um believed that and that's why they took her out like, i know i find it hard to believe that it's not a conspiracy that killed him some of them are just you hear about the main conspiracy for so long it's almost harder to be like oh i guess it wasn't you know i yeah. felt that way about princess Di's death too where it was like sounds like the royals would want to kill her i mean they're they're you know <laughs> they're all obsessed with the tradition and stuff but then you're like look into it and you're like okay but there's a lot of things that would have yeah. to happen that would be like a big conspiracy you know what i mean you're like okay it's like the moon landing right yeah you're like, yeah <laughs> no that's yeah, it's crazy. a weird one um oh okay so uh more uh, just a little bit more into the theory that it could have had to do with the cia is that Allegedly, hours after Mary's death, the chief of the CIA counterintelligence, James Jesus Angleton, James Jesus Angleton, probably Jesus, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why is the rest of it so English, though? Yeah. But, <laughs> but he was allegedly found breaking into her home to look for her personal diary. And he was caught breaking into her studio apartment at the time because it was attached to her brother-in-law's home so that was ben bradley her brother-in-law so it was like i don't know above the garage or it's like a guest house or whatever it's on his property yeah. so he's like what are you doing and they're like we're trying to protect jfk's reputation by finding her diary <laughs> i'm sorry I wow. really can't say that. <laughs> yeah, in an unbiased way. So I'm like, really? Everybody knew he, you know, yeah. he's a horny guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> he couldn't get uh, it in his pants. He's... Yeah. <laughs> I like JFK, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I've never know. known like too much about them. Uh, I try not to learn too much about politicians because I think they're all just kind of slimy. Yeah, and sometimes they're over covered and so you don't like i'm like i have no yeah. fucking desire to get to know any of the bushes any better at that you know what i mean i'm like no not not but, w bush you wanna you wanna listen to him do speeches where he george w well he, 
he just seems like a patsy who doesn't know much so <laughs> no, <he's so> stupid. <laughs> but yeah i doubt his uh, stuff would be interesting but i don't know jfk like the main pe- reason people seem to say that the C- cia or any other people like that would have wanted him dead was because he he was more of a pacifist in the way that he wasn't like oh let's oh, all yeah. go to war like with vietnam and bullshit he wasn't all like war 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 machine you know yeah so that part it, it appeals to me <laughs> yeah um but it's it's yeah sorry this is just the last bit it's that with the parent breaking in to get the diary uh which i guess the cia guy kept for a while and then ben bradley said he got it back when he learned they still had it and he's just like no man and then then him and uh tony or antoinette mary's sister they just burned it together and so nobody could have it anymore good yeah Yeah, Um, protect your sister yeah and your sister-in-law um Mm. and the one of the pictures i had to put up there they put a nice one up on most um websites she's kind of smiling at a party having a smoke yeah she's aboard the presidential yacht on his birthday dinner may 29th 63 the yacht was (gasps) called the sequoia oh i was gonna say is that the happy birthday from marilyn monroe (laughs) probably who knows which birthday that was i've just been watching the guy with the accordion in the background like being like where's the rest of him because it just cuts off like at his neck so you can't see his head but he's right behind her playing this massive <laughs> it's very Wait. distracting in that picture in... that i put up or of them yes the... no oh. that you put up <laughs> I was like, the picture you just talked about where she's smoking yes. and on the yacht there's a guy yes. playing the accordion behind her it's is very there... distracting <laughs> no, I, <don't> yes. <laughs> I was just like oh look at her she looks so carefree god damn it whatever okay I'll take your word for it Al Yankovic is in the background <laughs> <laughs> maybe I don't know she looks happy I'm like oh. yeah imagine how much longer and happier you might have lived if you hadn't come in contact with the Kennedys no I don't know um yeah that one was like a star-studded affair uh there was family members actors David Niven Peter Lawford and then yeah Ben and Tony Bradley and and Mary so I'm like who's yeah. who killed her and why and why don't we yet know if it didn't have anything to do with JFK at all because she was a fucking yeah. richy ass white woman in you know washington dc that got like gunned down in the middle of the day like a freaking <laughs> tupac shakur or something it just doesn't make <laughs> yeah. sense <laughs> yeah that is a little weird the timing of it all seems yeah. suspicious and i mean you know i love a good conspiracy but also i do like an answer even if yeah you know what i mean if you can debunk that it's not a conspiracy you know i get an answer i'm like fine my logical brain is happy with that but i can't find any for this one off the top of my head no it's a little weird yeah wow well anyway thanks for bearing with me that one got me a little (laughs) excited (laughs) yeah it was interesting yeah okay i'm glad you liked it well what's up next week if we're on time Woo! (laughs) <laughs> clink as I clink my necklace. <laughs> oh, was that what that was? Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, we are doing Cheers some myself. <laughs> uh woodland creatures, fairies, that kind of maybe stuff. some freaky fairies even. Ooh. I like looking up. We're gonna the get dark freaky ones. in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell yeah we are yeah this one was what this one is gonna be oh i think this one's gonna be kind of like the one that comes out near my birthday now so yeah let's get in the woods (laughs) yeah i'm ready um and then yes i don't know we just keep saying it but stay tuned there's definitely some fun things in the works and yeah maybe even some more collabs on the horizon so stay tuned Check us out on all our TikToks and everything. I will put yeah. in another one of those because 
no, I have people that say they found us on there. I'm like, I gotta keep it up. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes, Welcome. Me, yeah, me and you were gonna film one because we haven't done yeah. it together yet. So. We'll we'll do it when we go out for the <laughs> that beer Some... beer thing. <laughs> That's in a couple Kel weeks. Kelsey Kelsey and I's quarterly meeting because you know oh, even when you yeah. live in the same city together, sometimes it's hard to get together. <laughs> It is. It's brutal. It's fine. We always record <laughs> remotely. That's just us. And yeah, you guys never seem to mind. I know other people are like, oh, we're recording separately. I'm like, okay, guys, get over it. You might we... have a little bit of a lag. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could do it weekly. <laughs> driving well, we need... it's too late. I'd have to drive. It's like half an hour from your house back to my place, too. It's, we live in a big city, man. It can yeah. be a long drive anywhere. It's true. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's definitely easy for us this way. So that's what we do it. But well, anyway, until next time, I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited for the next one, but join our Patreon. Don't forget to rate us and tell your friends and keep us growing because I love all the extra ratings on good pods. And there's a few people yeah. that have been joining because um, you can join for like free on Patreon now to kind of see what the creators are up to. So oh, it, some people have been nice. joining for free to see what we've been doing. And I hope nice. you maybe like what we're doing and you decide to partake of the content for good for a little bit. Yes, <laughs> so, that would be awesome. Yeah, I know we just put out our last one so i put out a post about that when i was saying that this last episode was going to be a different one and that was our um february one which was the food tampering which was really fun i really enjoyed that yeah bonus episode um but yeah we'll definitely we, we owe a few more over there like they haven't done a video one in a while so yeah we'll be getting on that so stay tuned mm -hmm. until next time just keep it cryptic yeah, bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs>Thank you for listening to castles and cryptids we love all our listeners and appreciate every subscriber every new review every listen rate and download our music is by kobe off air and our cover art is by antonio garcia we are also a proud member of dark cast network where you can find the best and spookiest of all indie podcasts follow us on social media where we are at castles and cryptids on mostly all of the things now including tiktok check out our bonus content on patreon Cryptid clashes, video minisodes of your hosts making asses of themselves, ask me anything, quizzes, other special episodes, and more. Starting at just $2 a month, you can get one to two extra episodes, depending on your level. We produce, edit, and research everything ourselves, and any support you can lend helps us to keep it cryptic.